and welcome to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. I'm your host today. My name is uh, Tracy Blevins. I'm the principal at Dade Elementary School, and we're so glad to be able to spotlight our students and our faculty and our teachers today. We have a jam-packed show for you, so we're going to start off this uh, afternoon with our DES counselor, and it's Miss Cheryl Haynes, who's sitting here to my left. Mm -hmm. And um, what she'd like to talk about today is an upcoming workshop, parent workshop, that she has, uh, her and Ms. Bice have mm -hmm. worked together along with um, SRO uh, Chad Payne, and they will be presenting the workshop. And um, while she talks about it, we've got a flyer, if we don't mind putting that up, and that way um, you can go ahead and tell a little bit about the workshop. Yes, thank you, Ms. Blevins. Uh, we have an upcoming parent workshop on digital citizenship. The name of this workshop is called Smart Social Media. Um, this workshop is especially designed to encourage parents as uh, they work with their own children in social media, especially focused on social media apps, such as Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, um, things like that that a lot of families are talking about in their homes, um, things that a lot of parents uh, may have some questions about. And so we're going to be having this digital citizenship workshop on smart social media this coming Tuesday morning. So that's Tuesday, March the 27th, this coming Tuesday morning from 8.15 until 9.15. We will have door prizes, uh, we'll have food, Officer Chad Payne will be on hand uh, sharing some of the things from our, our SRO's perspective. Um, Miss Tonina Bice and myself will be there along with several other parents. There will be some excellent questions, Miss Blevin, some excellent mm -hmm. discussion and had amongst parents. And I know you're, you know, on the leading edge of research because, you know, research has shown that kids, uh, you know, late elementary, middle school, mm -hmm. high school, really their brains are not ready for the impact or for social media. But the fact is, that's not, you know, going to yes. deter people from using social media. So yes. it's our job as parents and as educators to actually train or, um, you know, make students aware of these apps. And I know you've got another slide mm -hmm. that uh, this is just one of the slides that will be shown during the, the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of give you a little snippet and um, let you see this next slide will tell you some of the great apps and some of the apps mm -hmm. that are maybe um, ones that you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. And so if we can pull that other slide up. Yes, uh, we'll be giving a copy of this slide to every parent that is in attendance, along with a copy of all of the slides that we talk about. This is the social media app rating guide. Um, you see in the left column the green apps. These are several apps that are user friendly for parents and for children. Uh, these apps will have a very easy to follow security guide where you and your child can go through and set privacy settings. This allows, <clears throat> allows you to choose who your child's contacts are going to be, um, who can contact them, how they communicate. There will be a lot of parental controls on the apps to the far left hand side. Those are in the green column. The yellow column in the center are things where there are either fewer controls or where um, there is more access to whoever is on the app. Like your children can be exposed to more people that you may not know. Um, apps over to the right um, are ones that there really are a serious problem about them. You can read about them online. One of the best sites is a website actually called Scary Mommy, and it's a mom who is giving a lot of information about the dangers of some of the, uh, the apps in the red column. Mm -hmm. So anyone attending our parent workshop this coming Tuesday morning, March the 27th from 8.15 to 9.15 at Dade Elementary School, uh, you'll be given this app rating guide along with a uh, several sheets of the slides that we're covering 
information from Officer Chad Payne, from Ms. Tanina Bice, and myself. This information is based on the most recent research on how to educate your children on internet safety. Uh, as Ms. Blevins mentioned earlier, this is a, a key part of the modern child's education mm -hmm. because these gadgets and devices are coming whether we've educated our children or not. Mm -hmm. And so we have phones, we have tablets, we have Chromebooks, right. we have home computers. Um, and so we don't want our children to be afraid. We want them to be smart. We want them to be strong, well-educated citizens and professionals in our community that know how to engage all these different things. Um, would you like for me to share some of the things that we'll discuss in the workshop? Sure, yeah, sure. Okay, um, some of the key things that we would like to talk about is that all of the parents would be using the apps that their children are using. That are very familiar with how they work, with how to set the parental settings on all these different things, um, that you know your child's uh, login, username, password, not just for each of the apps and sites that they're on, but for the devices. Because say, for instance, if your child has a Chromebook, mm -hmm they can have a login for themselves which right. you would need to know but then they can also have an alternate name an alternate login and a parent should have access to all those your child should not have a portal to the world wide web that you don't know about and so that's something that we're going to be talking about and that that how you would share with your children that contacts could actually have a false front this could be someone who is not what they seem to be mm -hmm. And so um, we'll discuss that. We'll also be discussing the importance of a technology contract between the parent and the child. Mm -hmm. We will have a sample of their technology, of a technology contract, and it'll be some important talk points between a parent and a child where they can come to an understanding, you know, right. that the child is a minor, and right. as such, the parent has a responsibility and therefore a right mm -hmm. to govern all those devices and all of the access that the parent will be paying for. So, And it sounds like it's going to be a very beneficial mm -hmm. workshop. So we definitely want you to, to make plans to come out mm -hmm. 815 to 915 mm -hmm. Tuesday yes, morning in the rough mm -hmm. room, which is right through the front door um, to the right of the foyer. Mm -hmm. um, and with that being said, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have mm -hmm. some students that will be sharing some of their, um, their writing. So thank you so much, Miss mm -hmm. Haynes, you, for Ms. coming Blitz. with me today. So we'll be right back. Georgia Northwestern Technical College is now accepting applications for classes. We offer programs in business, health, industrial, and public service at six campus locations with financial aid options as well. Take day, evening, or online classes to get your degree, diploma, or certificate. Apply now. Drop by one of our campuses today or check us out at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Get focused. Get hired. Looking for a great way to change your look? You'll find the friendly professionals at a Classy Cut Salon ready to care for you. A Classy Cut Salon is in the Gross Shopping Center next to the Dollar General. We serve men and women of all ages at a Classy Cut Salon. Call 657-5607. That's 657-5607 for an appointment. Or just walk right in for your next Classy Cut from a Classy Cut Salon in the Gross Shopping Center, Highway 11 North in Trenton. When you or a loved one is facing a life-limiting illness, hospice care may be the answer. At Tapestry Hospice, the patient is the focus of our care. We are here to serve you and facilitate your wishes. Tapestry caregivers are concerned with managing your pain, keeping you in touch with your physician, and helping you make plans for the future. Hospice is life-affirming, and Tapestry Hospice can help you deal with all aspects of life, mind, body, and soul. Call Tapestry Hospice for more information, 706-383-8812. That's 706-383-8812. Tapestry Hospice. Redefining Hope. The Dade County School System continues to put the safety of students first. That's why the Love the Bus Elementary campaign rolls on. Love the Bus is designed to teach students the importance of safety, respect, and proper bus etiquette. As we continue to enhance efforts of safety for our students, we'd like to have you as part of our team. If you're considering a career as a bus driver, call the Dade County Schools Transportation Department at 706-657-7053 today. Part-time hours with full-time benefits as a bus driver for the Dade County School System. 
A small bank with big service. Citizens Bank and Trust. Offering a wide range of services, including online banking. Pay your bills. Manage your account anytime, 24 hours a day. Your account balance is only a phone call away as well at 657-1234. Or visit our convenient locations. Look out Mountain, Georgia, Higdon, Alabama, on our main branch on Highway 11 and Trent. Citizens Bank and Trust. 657-5678. A community bank that believes in the community. Citizens Bank and Trust. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Hello everyone, we're so happy to be here today and I have with me the Dade Elementary School Young Author winners. We're so proud of these students. Our teachers work really hard on writing at Dade Elementary School. It's an, an initiative that Mrs. Blevins pushes for our students and uh, we are so happy to have these students today. I'm going to introduce the students to you and this is Ella case and Ella tell the audience whose room you're from. I'm from Miss Kent's. And she is going to read her poem for you now. Go ahead. Ice skating. I can go I can go ice skating in winter. I will wear a tutu. It will be pink of course. I will do tricks like fancy twirls my parents will be so proud that is excellent tell me what inspired you to write that because one time I went ice skating and I thought it was really fun was it well I'm so glad you had an opportunity to write about that was it fun and congratulations on winning all right next we have Ella Rose McBriar Wheeler and she has a poem for you too go ahead Ella Rose I like rain. I like it because I get to jump in puddles. It is cool when I look up at the sky and catch the water on my tongue. I think rain is cool. Oh, so you like rain, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, tell the audience whose room you're in. I'm in Miss Brooks'. She's in the first grade in Miss Brooks' room. And what inspired you to write your poem? I like looking up and catching the water on my tongue, and it makes me feel good. Oh, I'm so glad. And next, we have Sophia Verricchio. Sophia, will you read part of your story, please? The Enchanted Dragon. <clears throat> One time, there was an enchanted dragon. It did not want to hunt. The dragon didn't even want to harm or scare anyone. But once the dragon wandered off and got lost, the dragon knocked over a giant tree, and workers saw the tree had fell, so they hunted him. The dragon turned invisible and followed them. That is excellent. Sophia, where did you get your inspiration from? Because I love um, magical animals, so I just had to write about a dragon or a unicorn, something that is very fun. So you love animals. Do you love to read, Sophia? Yes. I heard you were an excellent reader. And do you like to write? Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Well, uh, we are very proud of these students. And uh, this is something that we do every year at Dade Elementary School. In fact, we do it countywide. And these were the students from kindergarten first and second grades who represent our county so we're very proud of these students for for their hard work we also appreciate the teachers for working so hard to uh, work with these students and help them gain the skills in writing and of course we want to thank our parents because our parents are very supportive and help the students as, as well uh, and Mrs. Blevins for pushing this and supporting us in this initiative on, on the Young Arthur's Contest. So thank you to everyone and thank you girls for working so hard and I hope you will continue to do this. Do you think this is something that you want to do next year? Yes. Well, tell me, when will you start working on this? I will start working on this right on the first day of first grade first day of first grade. Well, we look forward to reading your next story, okay? All right, when will you start working on this, Ella Rose? 
I will start working on this when I get home today. When she gets home today. That is excellent. Sophia, when do you plan on working on yours? Next week. Next week. Well, I know you can't wait to hear these girls next year. So thank you so much, and uh, we will see you later. Have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, not fast food, good food fast. The Moore family name has built a legacy of trust, compassion, and peace of mind by standing with families during time of loss. Now in our 70th year, the Moore family commitment grows even stronger, from affordable, traditional services to cremation. Our experienced staff stands ready to follow through on you and your family's wishes. Since 1945, the Moore family of funeral homes, North Sand Mountain and Trenton, always dedicated to those we serve. Rising Fawn Hardware is your place for all your gardening needs. Seeds, onion sets, cabbage, strawberry plants, and more. A complete line of home hardware items, too. Everything for the house, including plumbing, hardware, and metal roofs. Plus, Rising Fawn Hardware has everything you need for your livestock, including name brands like Nutria, Tucker, and Faithway. Always with a hometown atmosphere, it's Rising Fawn Hardware. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Open 8 in the morning till 6 at night, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and 8 to noon on Wednesday. Even open on Saturday from 8 until 4. Rising and phone hardware. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank Marion Countyans will ever need. At 402 North Cedar Avenue in South Pittsburgh, 4765 Main Street in Jasper, and at 14087 Highway 28 in Whitwell. Providing the highest standard of customer services with a personal touch. Our associates can help you with personal loans, personal lines of credit, a variety of mortgage loans, and more. And we offer real-time internet banking, too. See us in South Pittsburgh, Jasper, and Whitwell today. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank Marion Countyans will ever need. Need. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hello, Dade County. We're back. And I'm happy to tell you that we have the third, fourth, and fifth grade winners of the Dade County Young Authors Fair. Yes, this is a, a contest that we have in Dade County each year, and you are looking at the third, fourth, and fifth grade winners of this contest. We're so happy to bring them to you today. So I will let them introduce themselves to you. They will tell you their names and the grade, the, grade, the classrooms that they're from. Go ahead, all you. I love me. I love me by the willow and on a snuggly pillow. I love me when I color a cherry so bright and red. I love me when I lay down and start dreaming in my bed. I love me when I sing a terrible off-key note. I love me when I cast bait off a pretty wooden boat. I love me when I win. I love me when I lose. I love me when I get a painful little bruise. I love me. I adore me in different reasonable ways. I love me. I adore me in all the 24-hour long days. Everyone should love themselves. Everyone should do it. That is so beautiful. Tell them your name, Alia. My name is Alia. Alia Verricchio. And whose room are you in? I'm in Miss Tierce's. Miss Tierce's third grade. What inspired you to write that beautiful poem? My mom would always tell me to um, not only um, love other people, but also have, have time for yourself. And I decided to write something about that. That is excellent. That is wonderful. So your mom's your inspiration, it sounds like. Way to go, Mom. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us. All right, Hutch, tell the audience your name and whose room you're from, and then read a little bit of yours for us. Okay. My name is H, and I'm from Miss Rose's room. My book is called The Life. Life is hard. It is an adventure waiting to be discovered by a curious child that seeks it. Sometimes life can be hot cocoa by the fire on a co cold, snowy night. Other times life is an already lost war and the enemy is killing you, killing you slowly. Life is a winding path in your journey that is set with millions of traps. 
Life can be disappointing, and it can also be exciting in many ways. Life is an approval check you're trying to earn from your boss. We could go on and on about life, is, but, we can, but we also have more things to life. That is excellent. And there's a lot more. We just don't have time for him to read the whole thing. But tell us, H, what inspired you to write that? Um, my brother, Bo, he always had a story re um, read to him at night. Yes. And one night, my mom wrote, um, read him the book called Life. Uh -huh. And I was inspired by to write a story about that. Well, that is excellent. That is excellent. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. All right, Ruth, introduce yourself and tell us whose room you're from and then share some of your writings with us. Um, I am Ruth Pack from Miss Powers' fifth grade class and my book, or er, my story is called Avonia. Okay. Victoria's stomach twisted and spun and her reflection was green as a pine tree. She looked out into the ocean, and it seemed as though land was galaxies away. She was on her father's ship, and she was seasick. Her father was the captain of the ship fleet, and the maid was sick, so she had to stay on the ship. The king ordered a search for pirates, and she was dragged into the two-day trip. She closed her eyes, wishing to escape her reality. She had almost drifted into a cozy sleep when she heard men yelling. Batten down the hatches! All men on deck, they cried. When Victoria opened her eyes, she saw the ocean spinning, and it led to a whirlpool. Thank you. That is excellent. Now tell us, what inspired you? Um, I always like reading fantasy stories and letting myself escape my reality and, you know, just be in somewhere else than I'm actually in. And I just decided that I'd write about that. So you really like to write, huh? So um, not only do you have an opportunity to write in the classroom every day, but then also you have several other opportunities at Dade Elementary School to write. Tell us about those. Um, one thing we are doing is when the, with the superintendent, we are writing a, a book about character. It's called Kids Talks, Conversations for Building Character. So are you actually getting to write for that as well? Yes. Okay, and in the fourth and fifth grade, they also get to participate in the uh, Optimist Oratorical Contest, and they get to write for that as well. Am I right? So we give our students lots of opportunities to write and to speak and and to do activities where their um, strengths can shine. And we appreciate all of you guys coming out today, taking time out of your busy day to share your work with Dade County. So. So um, thank you for everything that you've done. We appreciate you guys, and we look forward to your writing, reading your writings for next year. So when do you actually start on yours, um, Aya? Like, um, what do you When you start writing your stories for next year. Um, I get bored, and I, I find, um, like, when I'm bored or I'm not feeling nice, I, I like to write in so I can express my feelings sometimes. That is wonderful, to be able to express your feelings through writing. And so you write pretty much all year long, huh? That is wonderful. Okay, well, thank you, Dade County, for tuning in today and for listening to us. And, and we just like to share the talent that is at Dade Elementary School. Thank you, and have a great day. NL Tax and Bookkeeping is ready to serve all of your tax needs. Nancy Anderton's been serving the Tri-State area since 1978. Now you can get your taxes prepared with no out-of-pocket expenses. Ask about up to a 1200 refund advance. It's fast, easy, safe, and convenient. NL Tax and Bookkeeping is open 8.30 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and 8.30 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Questions about the Affordable Care Act? We have those answers, too. And we offer a free form price comparison. Experienced and professional tax services. NL Tax and Bookkeeping. 500 Alabama Highway 73, 7 miles from downtown Trenton. Call today at 706-657-4758 or 256-597-2829. NL Tax and Bookkeeping. 706-657-4758 or 256-597-2829. 
At Gross Furniture in Trenton, Georgia, you get the savings, the selection, and the satisfaction of getting the furniture you deserve at the prices you want. Come in, relax, and take your time. Our staff can assist you with the entire process, from expert advice to professional delivery. That's because Gross Furniture is local and treats you with honesty. Just north of the Courthouse Square on Highway 11 in Trenton. Gross Furniture, the home furnishing store that offers you more. And welcome back. I have the pleasure of being here with two of Dade Elementary's star teachers. Uh, we have Miss Barton here on the end. She teaches fourth grade math. And we have Miss Blaylack. She teaches um, fourth grade ELA. And they are here. They're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Chromebook Initiative. And uh, we'll start out by saying um, a great big thank you to Dr. Harris and the Board of Education for um, allowing us to have the ACE Initiative, which stands for a uh, Chromebook from Everyone or a Computer for Everyone. And uh, we just want to talk a little bit about how we're implementing and how we're using those Chromebooks in the classroom because um, in this day and time that's how we're going to get to our students is through technology and that's why we talked about that this uh, a little bit earlier about the smart social media class and uh, Miss Barton tell us a little bit about how you use the Chromebooks uh, with your math classes of course yeah we love to use the Chromebooks we have a program called I ready through the school and we're lucky enough to have that support for the children they use Chromebooks we have one-to-one -one now thank thankfully from the board and Dr. Harris and they get on the program every single day in math and they use visual aids and um, representations for games and it makes math engaging and more fun for the students and it just helps them on each level so they can see and actually create math patterns as they go along. If they're more engaged in mathematics and they're going to have more fun, then they're going to want to come to school and learn the process. Absolutely, and there's a lot of ways I've seen you use that with the students is uh, some assessments that you yes. do. It's just we use assessment. Totally comprehensive, yes. you know, use of it. Uh, Ms. Blaylock, talk a little bit about ELA and how you use your Chromebooks in your classroom. Well, she had mentioned the iReady program. Right. We have the mm -hmm. iReady program, which we use as well, and we also have iReady workbooks, and so we can scan the workbook page into our Google Classroom where they can type their answers into the Google Classroom and use the book for the text and so we kind of pair what the boring work with mm -hmm. the fun yes. work so it's more engaging so, and they can utilize it. So more. how does that work though with paper usage? Oh that? it cuts down on copies mm -hmm. tremendously Huge. because they are na instead of having to make copies and then write in it they can type. Yes. And they look so professional because they have yeah. their little Chromebooks up or a Chromebook up and a mouse pad and a mouse that the um, our PTO was thank we were thankful enough mm -hmm. that they gave to mm -hmm. us. So they'll have that set up on their desk and then they'll have their textbook set up and they just work away. They've turned they into do. little they do typing. Look very Love professional, it. very professional. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in today with me and talking a little bit about the ACE initiative and how you use Chromebooks in your classroom. Again, we're very grateful to have those. Uh, we're all, you know, we're at a one-to-one -one yes. with students, and so uh, we are definitely implementing those and appreciate it so much. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we thank you for being with us today and uh, having another ep another episode of reading, writing, and arithmetic. And we will look forward to seeing you in a few a uh, few weeks from Date Elementary.